everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Liu from the Fired Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever wanted to find your way into flow, then do we have the Trusting Your Intuition show for you. Today, we'll talk about listening to intuition, feeling intuition, and allowing your intuition to guide you even when it doesn't feel easy. <laughs> that, plus, we'll talk about mountain hikes with Ruru, desert exploration, reliving graduation day, unwinding injuries, rewiring brain for safety and silence, one more new editor, YouTube lives for the Euro crowd, and what in the world pickup trucks and nightmares have to do with anything. <laughs> so welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am, Michael, but I'm a little bit worried about pickup trucks and nightmares. But I have, a, I have, I, I, did, I did this thing before I coming here. I drank. I'm bringing this drink, which is love, lavender, chamomile, jasmine, and green tea. So I'm, I'm drinking love. So I'm literally full. I will be love, full of love at, by the end of this episode. I like Just it. So I had know. Tosha Silver on the show yesterday, and we were talking about being guided by love. Yes. So how does it get any better than that? So or you're chugging love. <laughs> I'm chugging love because I'm that thirsty. We just ran back here to meet you. So, <laughs> so what is going on with pickup trucks and nightmares? So we um, – we were deciding, so we got the RV figured out last week, talked about that magic, which is really, really cool. And now it's been a matter of, I, I am Mr. Safety when I'm pulling around my entire family. Yeah. And last year when we drove an RV, um, it, it was more of a white knuckle experience. Mm. And I don't want that ever again. And so we've been debating uh, what we get for a truck, whether it's basically um, a large pickup truck, because this is a 20,000 pound RV that we're towing. So whether it 10 tons, wait, say that, 10 tons, oh my gosh. 10 tons. Wow. So whether, whether we use an extra large pickup truck or whether we go with, I can't believe I even say this, a, a, a home version of a semi rig. What? Wait, how is this making? Is this just to when when you have the RV? Don't you drive in the RV, or you're pulling the there RV? Are different types of RVs. This oh. is called a fifth wheel. A fifth wheel means there's a hitch, kind of like a a trunk on an elephant that comes out of the front of it and goes into the bed of the truck and becomes one, more like an eighteen wheeler at that point because it's 40 feet long and has a, a massive garage at the back end of it. So it's all together, it's 60 feet long. So from, from, from like the, from the beginning of the RV to the end, not including the, the, including the truck, including, including the, the truck, truck at 60 feet, about 60 feet, but the longest okay. RVs that you drive are about 44, maybe 45 feet. So much more space to play with but you tow it rather than drive in it. I see. So the trade-off is you can get a smaller RV, but with fewer space or get a bigger RV, but you have to have a pickup truck. And is it, and I didn't understand the connection with safety. How is it, how is this going to make you feel less white knuckling it? A pickup truck. I'm not sure how white knuckly it would feel because it's such a big RV a small home version of a semi truck, you don't even notice it behind you. But it's not a big deal to drive a semi truck. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking for my phone. I can show you a picture here. <laughs> Do I actually break? Yeah, hold on one second. Let's show you a picture. Hold on. <laughs> Just like a kid. Bear with me. <laughs> they're easier to drive because they're designed for the job. Mm hmm. They have tires that are meant to carry heavy weight. They have brakes that are meant to carry heavy weight. They have backup brake systems uh, that are meant to carry heavy weight. Everything about it is designed to carry heavy weight. I see. So I'm, I'm going to show you the one that we're probably not going with. We'll know in the next day or two. It's between this and one other. I believe we're getting a white one instead of this one. Let's see. I'm going to zoom. Hold on here so I can see what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like the semi truck. Wait. Okay, so what where do Rue and the cats go? Are they in the semi truck or are they being pulled in the trailer? 
It's a five seat with a bed in the back of it. And the kitties will stay in the RV while I tow it. Okay. And Ruru will be riding shotgun with me on the trip across the country because we'll still have the Tesla, which Jessica will be driving. Once we have uh, Tessie parked for a little while, she'll she'll be shotgun and, and Ruru will be in the back. <laughs> So it's much, it, this is much, much safer. It is, it is, um, you know, for an eco kind of guy, it's actually more, more um, fuel efficient than a pickup. I had no idea. Even though it's bigger, it's designed for the task. So it's more fuel efficient than a pickup truck. Wow. Um, but I, I, we weren't sure which way to go. And I'm not sure what steered Jessica around. For me, I ended up having a dream four or five nights ago. Because I've been asking for guidance in my dreams. Mm. We're talking about following intuition. I've been getting a lot of guidance in the dreams. And I have the most horrific, horrific understatement dream um, four or five days ago about uh, watching a pickup truck trying to tow um, a giant cart of potatoes. Okay. A massive cart of potatoes like overflowing, couldn't even handle it. And the hitch broke mm. and the pickup truck's still going and the cart of potatoes starts heading into oncoming traffic. Oh no. Oh gosh. Two more pickup trucks are coming toward me. I stopped. I was driving a pickup truck behind this. Oh, gosh. I stopped and got out of my pickup truck to watch this happening. One of the two pickup trucks coming toward me hits the cart, flips over hits my pickup truck that I'm outside of, but Ruru and two hens are in the pickup truck. The pickup truck implodes. Oh, so your pickup truck or the original one? My pickup truck. <laughs> okay. I assume Ruru is dead. Oh, and no. In the next scene, um, it, it was a horrifying scene with Ruru uh, in his dying moments. So thus, uh, you don't want to pick up pick trucks. Up trucks. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> Isn't it? I have to tell you, I've been I've been doing um, ever since um, interviewing the gentleman we talked about that does dream work. I started writing down my dreams, and they could not be clearer. You know, I, I mean, it's really they're super clear. Yours, your dream could not be any clearer with respect to what your soul is trying to tell you about a pickup truck. And I've had ones where lately where it's super clear, like, um, I'm, I'm trying to get home and I'm lost and confused and I don't know how to get home. I'm like, okay, that's kind of perfect for the state that I'm in. Or like, I'm, I'm having problems with commitment, you know, just different kinds of, of things that are kind of coming up in my life. My problem actually about commitment is I overcommit. So in my dreams, I'm having dreams of, you know, commitment generally is an issue but it's interesting how our dreams talk to us and so how does jessica respond to your dream nightmare basically she she i don't i have to actually speak to her and understand her um how she chose to go this method because at first she was saying oh, you no, independently going... chose wow yeah we independently chose i said i'm only going for the truck if if you want to go for the truck and so i haven't asked her how she came to that i definitely get to do that whether it was just my dream whether it was a feeling because i know she went to sleep and she's been asking as well because we kind of tag team on this um and and i want between you and me and everybody who's listening, <laughs> when it comes to financial matters, her opinion to me is actually more valuable than my opinion. Right. I, I really put her at, at the forefront of everything. Yeah. So uh, I would say she's even wiser. She's even shrewder than me. She comes from generations of accountants. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, God. So she really knows her, her dollars and cents. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so her dreams kind of are, are, are relevant from a financial standpoint as well. They have a little bit I'm extra sure twist. They are. Now, what's interesting about this truck dream is that things come in different levels and layers. So, um, an, a one level of the dream is the pickup truck. Um, another level of the dream is I had, excuse me, an overloaded um, cart, or there was an overloaded cart of potatoes. Mm-hmm. And that snapped off the back of this thing, of a pickup truck. 
And we could look at the overloaded cart of potatoes as there are so many moving pieces right now. Mm. And our goal is to simplify. Mm. We've got too many potatoes mm. being pulled right now. Mm. And so there's a whole nother le level to that of Michael, clearly we're telling you through the dream world, you get to simplify, simplify, and simplify more still. Mm -hmm. And and so I went into my automatic writing as I do, and, and people know they can get the book, Ah, oh, the Automatic Writing Experience, and learn how to do automatic writing, or go to automaticwriting.com. But in automatic writing, I bring my dreams, and I do dream interpretation. And the first dream interpretation wasn't actually about the truck. The first dream interpretation was about we're speaking to you through the dream world and giving you a gentle nudge, not their words, my words, that we get to simplify more quickly, dear one. Hmm. This Consider this a two by four in the dream world. Right. <laughs> oh, that's a good cautionary here. tale. <laughs> and I'm curious when you – so um. I remember the gentleman, Robert Moss is the name of the gentleman who works with dreams. And he suggests that before you go to sleep, you set out an intention. So it may be, you know, what is it like? Uh, so the last couple of nights I've been like, I want a healing or I want integration or I want to just have fun, he said too, or explore something. And um, and then you wake up in the morning and and or even in the middle of the night, maybe you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you write down like any little fragments that you can and then the, and re-enter your dream and either have them. So like I had this dream about commitment and then in my dream, I like dreamt about what I would want my commitment to be. So you actually go in and like reprogram your um, unconscious or subconscious or whatever it is, you know, to kind of reprogram it. Yeah. So and then, and then you journal about it. So I was actually doing the same kind of process as you. So my question for you, Michael, is what was your intention when you went to sleep? That you're, what was the question that you were trying to answer? Like, should I buy the truck or the, what, what was the question? Probably was, should I buy the truck? Uh, because I've been asking, do I get this RV? Do I get that? Do I buy the truck? Do I not get the truck? Um, how does this piece fit into place? How does that piece, piece fit into place? And, and right now we're deciding between two trucks and, and I, I got a, a dream about an, a couple alligators, one standing on top of the other alligator last night, um, which I think means um, to, to ask for what I want and watch the small details. Mm -hmm. So um, I get to play with each piece of this and each night I find the coolest dream work to me um, is asking for guidance mm -hmm. because it tends to be so crystal super not clear, not necessarily what you want, but super clear. Yes. Now you have to train yourself to write things down. And I, I realized until the last few weeks, I have not been as, um, meticulous about that. And when I don't write things down, what happens is you get out of practice on how to remember. Mm -hmm. And for those who haven't written down their dreams, memory, uh, short-term memory, waking short-term memory is not the same as sleeping short-term memory. Mm. And so what happens is you wake up and you go, oh, no, I can remember that. And you go to write it down and it's gone because it didn't go into your short-term memory. Yes. So you have to do for myself, um, I have to either give myself visual images that I replay in my mind or I'll repeat a series of words. Uh, mm. You know, if I go... Um, Two crocodiles, I'll remember, okay, there were two crocodiles and there was this struggle and there was some sort of transportation going on and it was really cold and there was water and it allows me to unfold. Or or if I said two crocodiles, suitcase, a tsunami or something, then a whole dream would spill yeah, up. Yeah, he just, Robert Moss describes them as fragments, but those fragments, they like knit back to the actual memory in your head so that you actually remember the actual dream content. I, I, I have to, you know, it's... But this is this conversation is making me think, you know how they all say, like, you need to follow your dreams. And when people refer to that expression, it's like, follow your dreams, like your highest aspirations for what you want and like want to manifest in the world. You know, it has that kind of feeling to it. Um, as both of us are now navigating um, the language, as Robert Moss describes it, it's the language of our soul. Um, we're actually following the language of our soul. We're following our soul's dreams, not CJ in the material world. Like I would like to have that beautiful, like they have in the secret, like I want to get that beautiful Cartier watch, you know, that may be my dream. But this is kind of a whole nother 
idea of following your dreams that is interesting, right? I mean, because when people, because I've been contemplating, like, I went to a class and said, what are your dreams? You know, and I thought, I don't, like, I don't really have those kind of aspirational kind of like, oh, I want a Cartier watch. And, you know, it's like, it's, I don't, I'm so far from the material at this point. I don't have that kind of, those kinds of dreams. Like, I dream for, like, world peace. Like, it's, it's not, it's not like anything, like, you know, even maybe potentially possible for, you know, for a period of time. But those are my kind of dreams. So these dreams that we're talking about are way more tangible, right? Like, get the semi. Like, super clear, your dreams have spoken. And watch out what you're doing or you're going to implode. Yeah, exactly. Watch it. Watch for the potato. Too many potatoes in the cart. You know, your cart is going to dip over with all the potatoes that you put into it. I just think, I I really do think this whole idea of following your dreams and and this new way of thinking about it is just, it's really powerful because then you're following really the soul and um and some way like all these messages that the poor divine has been trying to like get to us and we just don't get it at least there's like one more try in your sleep that they can talk to us what's really cool to me is that once we get it in the dream world now let's take it into the waking world Mm -hmm. because there is no difference once we understand that this is, you can call it a simulator, you can call it a holographic universe, you can call it an earth school. But once you realize, if, you're, if you really understand that your spirit having a human existence, then the signs and symbols don't stop during your waking hours. Yeah, they this is a waking dream. They may quieter, yeah. but they're there. Yeah. So all of the trail access being closed, it might be time to go. Our, our uh, washer dryer unit for the... Um, a uh, brand new washer dryer unit got put in when we got here. Awesome, really comfortable. Yay! Because because there were two big things that we got getting off of the road here: super fast internet and a washer dryer that we didn't have. We had a very wimpy washer dryer on the RV. So we're like, yes, this feels like home. Well, <laughs> oh, no. Part of the washer hose broke. It's back ordered and won't be in for months wow time to go well you look at it you look at these pieces and what matters to you they will speak in the language that matters to you Mm -hmm. if it didn't matter if we could just go down the street and get this taken care of perfect but a retreat center out in the desert where there's no like coin operated thing next door they will speak in the language that grabs your attention if you will ask and listen. Right. Yeah. Just like with, I mean, I'm, I, I just love that story that you shared in terms of how you've been found your grace <laughs> being your new RV. So, and, and, and the truck is going to be, her name is Ease. Ease. Oh, Ease is going to be carrying grace. So it's going to be grace and ease going down the ease road. Ease is leading grace. Interesting. Wow, I love that. Okay, so I I had um, a, a similar experience. I told you have, I've been doing kind of something similar, and uh, much like your awe experience, I don't know um, exactly what the process is, but what I was trying to, I've been kind of like finding my own way along this We need um, to thing. get you a book, CJ. I have a book. I have to read it. <laughs> so, I, but what, I've, what Robert recommended and what I'm doing is I draw a picture. I kind of like... I tune into my feelings because your feelings are kind of another way of kind of tuning into what's happening on you in the inside. And so I've been doing these drawings and I have no, I just, I have this beautiful thing. I love my color pencils that I just got. So I have a big thing of color pencils. I roll them out and I, in the, when I wake up in the morning and I just like, what am I feeling? And I draw it out and I draw, and I really don't know what I'm drawing. I'm just letting my hands move and let, so it's like an automatic drawing um, yeah. and let it just kind of like come out into the page. And um, recently I I drew, like the pictures have been really amazing. Um, um, but one of them is just being in the unknown. And I was like, wow, I don't really know what, like what, what's going on. Um, and, but I could just be like, you know, get, I would say, this is how I'm feeling. And that would parlay into an internal message. If like, you know, you're always in the unknown. 
it's just our delusion and thinking that totally. we have control um, and that's like our forceful way trying to force our will and imposing on what's happening and versus just watching what is right instead of like oh well i'm gonna like figure out how to get the washer and dryer in right away you know that's kind of like that's something there's nothing wrong with that but there's just like life is telling you about it's time to go. And so if you're kind of like, no, I'm not going to go, that's kind of your forceful will that's being applied on what's happening. And um, I, so I, I did one today and um, it was a big lightning, <sighs> lightning mm -hmm. rod. And it came down all the way down to a little, um, a little tailbone piece yeah. because yesterday when I went to the chiropractor, I was so off. Like when my doctor, who's not like a regular um, doctor, he's a chiropractor, energy medicine, nutritionist. Like I don't even, he's like someone from a different planet. He's the most amazing. We all need one of those. He's the most amazing physician. If you ever are willing to try something that is out there, but really, really works. Um, he's so deeply attuned, but he looked at me and he said, um, you're not in your body. There's you, and then there's like an energy. Your energy stepped outside, and I was like, and he's like, "How is your, how weird are your thoughts?" I'm like, "My thoughts are all over. I, I've had a really hard time concentrating." And I said, "I think this is related. I got when I was writing that this is related to my son graduating somehow. I don't really know how because I feel like he's coming back to where I live, but I thought I don't really know how this all works together." And then I said, and then like a couple of weeks ago, I realized like, I, I, when I was younger, I was carrying a big bag of takeout food in Boston and it was super icy and I slipped and I fell and I fell right on my tailbone and it went, a, the ripple of that went all the way up my spine, my central nervous wow. system. And um, the thing about me is I actually have my tailbone and then I have another little segment. It's this other segment that curls up. That's another piece on my